Last time, we looked at how calculating the price density can help to put a quantifiable figure on the amount of noise in an asset at any point in time. But that's not the only technique that can be used. Today, we consider one of the most popular alternatives. As with almost any aspect of trading, there are multiple ways of achieving different tasks, and measuring noise is no exception. Today, I'm going to look at a tool called the Efficiency Ratio, which was developed by none other than Perry Kaufman. This provides an alternative to the price density method that we looked at last time. We'll look at how these are similar, but also how they differ which should help you to then start thinking about which one might work best for you. Let's take a look. If you watched the previous episode, you'll know how the whole concept of price density revolves around how much the price action is able to fill out a box. And when it does fill out that box, it means we have high levels of noise. Whereas if the price action is much smoother, going from one corner to another, it's an indication that we have low levels of noise. And we also considered the reasons why this is so important. And generally speaking, high levels of noise are okay for mean reversion systems. So we can say that it's the friend of these. Whereas for trend following strategies, noise can be a disaster. And so it's a foe. Now, it's worthwhile just refreshing very quickly on how price density is calculated, because then we're going to compare it to how Perry Kaufman's efficiency ratio performs the calculation. Price density sums up all of the individual highs and lows from each of the bars. So here we can see the difference between that for the first bar in the period. Here we've got the second, third, and all the way through, we'll keep adding these together until we've done the final bar within the period that we're looking at. This sum is then divided by the high minus the low of the range of values. So that's the highest high and the lowest low. And so if the moves of the individual bars is high compared to the range, it means we have a high level of noise. And when the individual moves are small relative to that range, we have low noise. So let's now look at how the efficiency ratio goes about this. And the first thing that you'll notice is that the individual price moves here are on the bottom as the denominator. And because of that, this calculation has to be interpreted in the opposite way. But we'll see an example of that in a moment. So let's again break this down into what it means against the actual price action. And here, instead of using the high and the low of the same bar to give an idea of what those intra-movements are, the close price of one bar is compared to the close price of the previous bar. And it's this that gives us our measure of the movement within this period. But just like with price density, this is done for each of the successive bars in the whole of the period, and that value is then summed. But because we've got values potentially going up and down here, it's the absolute positive values that we use. Now, another difference is that where price density uses the range between the highest high and the lowest low, the efficiency ratio looks at the absolute change in the price. So it takes the final price in the period, subtracts the initial close price in the period, and it's this difference that gives an idea of what the meaningful price move is. So if we think about this, if we have relatively small differences between successive bars, compared to a larger net movement, this will give us a high value, which indicates low noise. And when we get low values, that will indicate high noise. So this is the exact opposite interpretation that we would use with price density. So let's now compare these two methods. In terms of similarities, 
Both of them use the sum of individual bar moves. They do it slightly differently, so price density looks at the high and low of individual bars, whereas the efficiency ratio looks at the move from one close to another. But both of these components are effectively doing a similar thing. But we see more of a difference when we look at the other component in these two calculations. Price density uses this range of price movements, whereas the efficiency ratio looks at the net price over that particular period. And this will mean that noise gets interpreted in different ways. And we also have to remember to be careful when we're interpreting the values, because a high value in one signifies high levels of noise, but a high value in the other signifies low noise. But which of these methods is the best at determining what the noise levels are in order to help us make better trading decisions? Well, that is something that I'll be looking at in future episodes. But before I do that, I want to spend some time actually putting these into practice with real assets and real price data. And I'll be presenting results back to you in the following two episodes for a number of different assets and asset classes. Then following this is where I start to look at the effectiveness of each of these two mechanisms. I'm trying to form an opinion of which works best under which circumstances. Now, to be notified when all of these episodes become available, the best way is to subscribe to the Darwin X channel. And if you click on the bell icon, you'll also get a notification on your mobile phone whenever any of these or future episodes get released. But now, until next time, trade wise, trade safe.